Today we're going to go to the World War II National Museum in New Orleans, Louisiana. And if you want to come here, well, it's easy to find. It's located right along Interstate I-10 in downtown New Orleans. The good thing is, if you want to come here on either side of the interstate, there's an exit ramp. Also, when you get off on these exit ramps, hey, you got to be wary of the bums. This area is littered with several little bum camps, and uh, they can be a little aggressive at times. They're definitely annoying. Be mindful. There's, you know, like any other major city like Seattle or San Francisco, these clowns are everywhere. The first thing you need to know is where to park, and there's a parking lot right next to the museum. And you can park here if you want, but I recommend you don't because it's not operated by the museum. And if you go over your time that you purchased ahead of time, you could get the boot. And if you get the boot, you can wind up costing you about $120 to get that sucker off. And the people who run this lot are ruthless. They will pull up in that parking lot the minute it expires to boot you. All right, where well you see this first P is that's where you don't want to park. You want to park on the second P, which is on Magazine Street. There, you just take your ticket whenever you come in, and then you pay once you leave. So it doesn't matter if you're there for an hour and you go more than you think you'll be there for. It's not a problem. And they ain't going to boot your uh, car either. So it's run by the museum. It's a lot better. And they have security, too. Well, one thing is, if you don't want to come to the museum, but you just happen to want to come near it, they do have some stuff outside that you can take a look at. There's a few statues and some artifacts that came from World War II. it's time to enter the museum. And the first thing you're gonna see is this big huge open area and what they have on display here does change from time to time but for the most part it does stay the same. A constant theme throughout this museum for me is always look up. They always have something hanging from the rafters and usually it's an airplane and in here they have a few. Our first stop is going to be at Union Pacific, and you can come through here if you want, but you don't have to. And what you're going to do is you're going to get this little card that simulates dog tags, and you're going to scan it at different locations throughout the museum. And uh, whenever you get back home, you can um, read about different stories that different soldiers of, of things they experienced during World War II. But we're going to start at the Campaigns of Courage. And like I just said earlier, always look up because when you enter here, they got a Messerschmitt hanging from the roof. And as you can see already, there are TV screens or film screens or some sort of imagery always being displayed and it's gonna be a theme throughout the museum. Um, they have lots and lots of weaponry uh, and that's not just Americans they also have it from the Germans and the Japanese and other forces that uh, fought during World War II. I have to hand it to the uh, curators of this museum because they cover some battles that I never even heard of, which was nice. Now this is one of the more interesting parts in the museum and this is the flight log from the Enola Gay and this watch was worn by Colonel Paul Tibbetts who was the pilot of the Enola Gay I believe and uh, the fact that they have that is kind of eerie in a way but it's very interesting.
All right, for you millennials who may be coming here, uh, this part may be a little disturbing for you because they're gonna have some imagery that you may not like, particularly the flag on the right. This is history, this is educational. It is not meant to disturb your senses or your feelings. Uh, you need to come here and turn your brain off to a certain extent and open your mind and learn something. Now this is an area that I really enjoyed. This whole area had been designed like it was the 40s. Like this movie theater, for instance. And then they had a uh, nice little house, nice quaint little house, you know, had some memorabilia and such in here. It made you feel like, uh, you know, you were at home listening to the radio and hearing about the uh, war and the horrors that were going on at the time. And, made you feel real patriotic. This area was nice as well because even though the soldiers were off in Europe fighting a war, there were so many people back here in the U.S. doing their part to help fight in the war as well. And like earlier in the museum, they have to cover the Manhattan Project, which was our race for the atomic bomb. Now this area was kind of neat. Um, this is to give you a simulation of what it was like in some of these bunkers like along the Normandy coast for the D-Day invasions. And since I have been to Normandy, um, I can say this does give you a decent representation of what it was like. It's not 100% accurate by no means, but it does give you a decent sense of what it was like to be in the bunkers. This is one of the more interesting pieces in the museum, and this is the Enigma machine. And we use this machine, uh, so when we intercepted messages from Germany, we were able to decipher those messages and figure out what it was they were doing. And we finally come to the D-Day invasions. And this area I was a little disappointed in for as, as big of a moment it was for us for the amount of the huge amount of loss of life that took place. I don't think they did this area justice. I think uh, they could do a lot better with this. So I'm hoping as the years progress, they can do a little bit better job with it. Okay, so you want to go to the World War II Museum, what's it going to cost? Well, it's going to cost you $35.50 per person, and for two people, after tax, $74.16. And to be point blank, I think the cost of admission to this museum is a little steep. And then, if you had to add in the cost of parking, 
hey, this day could cost you 100 bucks easy. Now, if you come here, there is a lot to take in. You want to allot three to four hours if you want to fully immerse yourself in the history of World War II. If you want to see more about World War II history, click on the video link at the end of this video. It's my tour of Normandy and the D-Day beaches.